you know what actually you guys I think I think I want to cut the cords now okay just making that one simple choice around me my body and my birth <sighs> to my channel today I am talking about why I chose to free birth twins and if you haven't already subscribed hit that subscribe button and like and share this video all right so I am finally talking about why I chose to free birth in the first place and I have a little sleeping baby on me right now Matisse has I have Rumi Matisse has Elio so I'm gonna try to get through this <laughs> while I can while she's still sleeping on me. I wanna start from the very beginning of where this journey started and sort of how it evolved into me fully free birthing at home. It was definitely uh, a journey and a process. It was just such an incredible experience and I'm so excited to to share why I decided to do that. I also just wanna say I am not giving out any medical advice. I am just sharing my own personal journey and story. So it all began with when I was pregnant with my daughter Safia. So it's my first daughter. I sort of I've always, you know, gone the more natural route with things. I've always been interested in um, holistic living and always lean more towards that way. And so naturally, when I was pregnant with her, I wanted to find out as much information about having a natural birth. I was very drawn to having a home birth, but I very strangely didn't make any choices towards actually having a home birth with her because I had this really deep rooted belief that I wasn't able to do it. And I had a very strong narrative that I was not good at handling pain. Like I had a I had a very strong narrative that I had a very low pain threshold, which was just something I basically created about myself. It wasn't true whatsoever. I remember in my pregnancy with her, I started eating, um, becoming much more conscious of what I was putting in and on my body, which is, you know, I think it's very normal for women to have that feeling of wanting to be like, okay, I really want to take good care of myself because I'm, it's not just about me anymore. Like I'm growing another human. I had watch the business of being born during my first pregnancy and I was just totally convinced that having a home birth was the way to go and that natural birth was the way to go and you know having drugs and interventions in your in my birth was basically just going to lead me to having the birth that I didn't want ultimately even though I knew all of those things I still made choices that were out of alignment with that belief. I still chose to be with a midwifery that didn't support home births, they only did hospital births, very much actively chose every step of the way to have a hospital birth. Even though deep down inside it was my dream very much to have a home birth, like I said, I had this strong belief that I wasn't able to do it. I would look at videos of other um, home births, particularly water births. I was fascinated by water births and I would watch a lot of videos on those and I would always think, oh, I would cry. I still cry at every birth video I watch, but cry watching these birth videos. They were so beautiful. They're just at home with their families giving birth in the water. I've always felt very connected to the water and I just thought it was the most beautiful thing ever. And yeah, I actively chose um, out of alignment with that, with my first birth. Ended up being very medicalized, my first birth. Even though I, I was informed of a lot of things or so I thought about the choices that I felt that I was making for myself ultimately, um, I, I wasn't, you know, and I'm not trying to blame the hospital system because the hospital system and actually works perfectly the way that they want it to work. Um, I just wanted to have a natural birth and that's pretty hard to have in, a, in the hospital. My birth with Safia, you know, it was beautiful in a lot of ways. This was my first, my first birth, my first daughter. 
and it was traumatizing in a lot of ways. I ended up having a cascade of interventions simply because I was in the hospital and I had, you know, a shot of morphine, I had Pitocin, I took an epidural, I ended up having a vacuum because I was trying to push her out of me while lying on my back, which is almost next to impossible. And I left that birth feeling um, very um, sad, really. Um, and I felt very unempowered. I didn't feel good about the way that things ended up going down, especially since I had, I felt like I had, was aware of all of the interventions that could have happened to me. I knew that having a Pitocin would lead to me having an epidural. I learned all that in my pregnancy, but I still ended up having all of these things occur because of the setting that I was in. I didn't feel good postpartum. I didn't have um, postpartum depression, but I just felt unempowered. I f everyone was like, wow, oh my God, amazing. You know, you had a natural hospital birth because I ended up um, giving birth vaginally, but I was just really confused about what had happened. I didn't feel good about my birth. It, you know, there's like at least 10, 15 people in the room while I'm giving birth, pushing out a baby that's while I'm lying on my back because I can't move my legs because I'm on an epidural. You know, there's bright lights shining on me and there's just this constant feeling of fear um, lingering in the room. You know, I've got the fetal heart monitor fetal monitor on my belly that's keeping me tied down. You know, I've, I've, I have people talking negatively about my body and my birth. Oh, saying stuff like, oh, first, first babies are so stubborn, you know, bad body. Just this sort of negative talk around birth and that my body didn't know what it was doing. It wasn't, you know, like I said, it's not the hospital's fault because that's how they operate. That's how they work. Um, they, they work um, based out of fear. They always work based out of worst case scenario. Worst case scenario is their first case scenario. I felt that I had informed myself enough and I, I felt that I was educated enough on, on being able to go in there and have the birth that I wanted to have, but I just simply was not. Um, and my first mistake was just being in the wrong place, <laughs> giving birth in the wrong setting, trying to be somewhere where what I wanted was not going to be supported whatsoever. You know, it's tough because I felt that I, I, I wish, like I, I have no regrets because it's led me to, to this birth that I had now. So yeah, that was a really eye-opening experience for me and right away after that birth I knew that for my next birth I was going to be having a home birth and I was manifesting this this home birth um, all the time I spent so much time I continued after my first birth to watch um, home birth videos um, of women having water births and I, I knew that that was what I was gonna have. And then two and a half years later, I found out, we found out that I was pregnant again. I'd already like mentally um, planned to go to a different midwifery that supported home births. And that was very much what I was gonna do. That was it, like I knew that I was gonna have a home birth. So I had, chosen this midwifery and thought that that was the direction I was going in and it all seemed very straightforward to me. So I go in for my nine week ultrasound that was scheduled by the midwifery and I go in and lo and behold there is two sacks on the screen and I am pregnant with twins. Oh my goodness. And it was such a shock. I was in so much shock. I honestly was so shocked. All I could do was cry. I was just crying, crying, crying. And that was just from the shock of thinking about having twins. Um, 
And then funny enough, later on that day, I had my first actual appointment with a midwife, uh, with the midwifery that I had chosen to go with. Have the call with the midwife and I told them that I was pregnant with twins and right away, I just immediately had this high risk label stamped on my forehead right away. Twins are high risk. You will be now with an OB. We do not support twin births um, or twins whatsoever. Um, so yeah, you are now with a, an obstetrician and here are all the risks of twins and you are now high risk for this, 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 and this, okay? All within the same day. So I find out that I'm having twins and then I find out that I'm high risk and that I will not be with a midwifery anymore. And I'm like in just shock. Um, and obviously that being said, um, obstetricians don't do uh, home births. So I was, felt like my dream was literally being ripped out of my hands. Um, and it was really, really, really upsetting. Not only that, we were in the midst of, you know, the in between lockdowns and, and uh, Matisse wasn't able to come to any of my appointments with me um, while I was pregnant. I was devastated and I basically numbed myself to, to think about having the birth that I wanted to have because I, I was high risk. This was what I was told. This was what um, I was now and I was now in this category and I just was planning on going along with um, the system basically. So um, they set me up with an OB and I tried my best to go along with this idea. And in the beginning, like I said, I just completely numbed myself to, to thinking about the birth that I wanted to have. Um, and I would go in for the appointments and I was, you know, I had like a list of, of, um, no, no, in the beginning, I think I just went in and I was like, okay, whatever you say, my birth is going to be like, is how, what it's going to be like. Um, whatever you say goes is going to go, I guess. And so I was trying to go along with that and I did all of like the early testing, um, all like the ultrasounds, all this sort of stuff. And the genetic testing, um, and then go, yeah, just basically thought that I was just going along with, um, with that route. And that was my destiny now. I had actually, before I found out I was having twins, I had bought this book called Orgasmic Birth. When I had got the book, I hadn't started reading it and I just put it on the shelf. And um, then when I found out I was having twins, I had sort of surrendered to like, okay, well, I guess I'm just gonna have like probably a very medicalized birth because twins are scary and something could happen to me um, and the babies. So I'm just gonna do like every medical thing that they recommend that I do. <sighs> So I, I, I didn't read the book because I knew that if I had started to read the book that I wouldn't want to give birth in the hospital. But I basically was like started slowly but surely a few weeks past and I slowly started being like, okay, well, what if I try to have like the most orgasmic hospital twin birth ever? Um... You know, why don't I try to have the birth that I tried to have the first time with Safia where it was just like a natural twin or just a natural birth in the hospital. So that's sort of like the next step I reached. And I started being like, okay, okay. And I started empowering myself again. And I, and I, so I picked up the orgasmic, orgasmic birth book and I started to read it and I was like, oh no. And I was reading exactly what I was worried that I was going to read, which was that was was in alignment with my truth, which was have a home birth. <laughs> Every single story that was written was like, I had a traumatizing hospital birth and then I had the most incredible home birth ever and it was amazing and my family was there and it was just this unbelievable experience and and so I was like, oh no, you know, it was like one of those things that I knew was my truth 
and I didn't even want to admit it to myself because it was scary. It was scary to admit that truth to myself. I slowly but surely started to feel that fire that I had dimmed down starting to, starting to <laughs> grow again. Just right here, right here in my chest, I could feel that fire slowly starting to build up. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. This is my truth. This is what I want to do. Um, there was really no going back after I started watching, reading that orgasmic birth book and, um, watching, like I allowed myself to start watching, um, birth videos again, um, of home births. And I was like, okay, there's like really no going back now. So the next step for me was basically how was I going to talk to Matisse about this? Um, and I remember starting to tell him kind of like, Hey, um, so I'm thinking that I still want to have a home birth and I'm wondering if maybe I can search and find if there's a midwife that would support me in having a home birth for, with twins. And he was like, no, it's not safe. It's not safe to have a home birth. Let's just go to the hospital. Why don't we just get a doula and, and go to the hospital? And I, I wasn't satisfied with that answer um, <laughs> because that was not what I wanted, but I was trying to be, you know, it, it took, it, it, it was like, okay, okay, so we can, we'll get a doula, okay, let's, okay, maybe that is the safest way to go, like, okay. And um, so that was sort of like the next step of progression. And then I was sitting in my room. I had done a lot of yoga. I did a lot of yoga during my pregnancy. And there was just one spot in our bedroom um, that was looking out at the mountains and out at the trees. And I would sit and do my yoga and I would just watch the wind um, blow, blow the leaves on the trees and the birds flying by and you know, the mountains are just so beautiful. And I just thought to myself, I just want to give birth right here. I don't want to leave my house to have these babies. This is where I feel safe. This is where I feel connected. This is where I want to give birth. It was really from, yeah, me sitting down and doing yoga in my house that connected me to my truth of knowing that that was what I wanted to do. I had heard of free birthing before because there was one woman that I followed that had free birth twins uh, twice in, um, in her house. And I just remember thinking that that was so badass. Like, oh my God, she birthed twins twice in her house. Like, Damn, that's what I want to do. Like, I, I want to do that. You know, how how amazing. Like, she never even saw a doctor in her pregnancies. Nothing, no ultrasounds, nothing. She actually, the first time she had twins, she didn't even know she was having twins because she never had an ultrasound um, in her pregnancy. The second time she did know she was having twins, um, but she still free birthed them in her house. And so I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And I just totally resonated with that. And I was like, that's what I want to do. I started just looking at free births and, and getting interested in free birthing. And if you don't know, free birthing is birthing without any kind of medical professionals around. It's just you and your, whoever you feel safe having there basically. So I remember coming back to Matisse again and being like, have you ever heard of free birthing before? And he goes, no. And I was like, I, I want a free birth. That's what I want to do. And he was like, you're making it sound like you want to go off and give birth alone in like the woods or something. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. Like, I want to do that. I want to follow. I want to give birth like an animal does. Like, I want to have a physiological birth, undisturbed birth. He was like, and I was, he could tell that I was, I had that fire in my eyes and I was so passionate about it. And this idea of giving birth made me excited. Um, 
you know, the, the, the direction that I was supposed to go in before was making me numb and shut off and not wanting to give birth at all. And I felt like I was already traumatized by the thought of the birth that I hadn't had. And, but this giving birth at home, um, in the water with my family, especially with Safia, like that was the most important thing to me was that Safia was going to be there. Because I wanted her to witness a natural, undisturbed, spontaneous, physiological birth in the water. I wanted her to meet her siblings that way. He was like, okay, let's do it. And then he said, the only thing that I don't know how to do is I don't know how to cut like, what do we do with the placenta? I don't know how to cut, cut the umbilical cord. What do we do in that case? So I was like, why don't we do a free birth course? And he was totally game. He was like, yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's teach ourselves how to have babies. We got the course and we, we more so, um, you know, dove into learning everything that there was about free birthing and birthing on our own, but the number one thing that came, that was the clear message was that we didn't have to learn anything. My body already knew exactly what it needed to do to give birth. The number one thing that I needed to do was I needed to feel, this is um, what Sarah Buckley always says, private, safe, and unobserved. That was all I needed to do. That was all I needed to feel. Private, safe, and unobserved. So for me, that just meant being right where I did my yoga, right right outside my bedroom. Uh, that's where I wanted to give birth. That's where I felt mo most safe and um, unobserved from the world. And um, and private, you know, choosing who who we chose to have there. I just dove into learning about birth. I listened to every single podcast I could listen to of um, birthing, free birthing experiences. I, I listened to a lot of Sarah Buckley, a lot of Sarah Buckley podcasts. I read her book, um, Gentle Birth, Gentle Mothering. And, I, and we took the Free Birth Society course. It was also that and also, you know, connecting with what felt right to me, you know, understanding this information, but what resonated with me and diving into my intuition and, and not listening to anyone else's voice, but what felt right to, to, in my voice and really tapping in. And it was a lot of work. I did, you know, I did yoga all the time, meditation, um, you know. Uh, looking at mother nature, observing mother nature in a, in a way where it was of how I was connected to it and how mother nature created birth and, and, and birth is designed to work. It's designed to work perfectly. And of course there's a time and a place for hospital births. There sometimes can be medical, you know, um, situations where medical use is needed, but it's, it's the minority of the time. And of course I had fears that would come up around, you know, giving birth at home unassisted, but fear is normal and natural in pregnancy. I would have to differentiate between, is that actually a fear or is that my into, I, I, I ha sort of had a hard time in the beginning differentiating between intuition and fear. And I would always know when it was fear and when it was intuition because the fear didn't feel good in my body. That wasn't my truth when those thoughts came up. And when intuition came up, which was always the same message, which was that my body and babies know what they're doing. My body was designed to give birth and, and I, um, I am safe and I trust my body. That was my ultimate belief was I trust my body. I really, really, really got into learning a lot about risk. Um, you know, what is risk? And for me, giving birth in the hospital was way riskier than giving birth at home because I know with twin births, I would have, um, this is just a few things I know for sure I would have had to go through. I would have been induced at 36 weeks. 
36, 37, 38 weeks, I would have been induced no matter what. Which is already thrown it, throwing off my body's natural hormonal cascade of giving birth physiologically is by going in and intervening. That would be the first intervention. I would have 100% would have had to have an epidural. I wouldn't have been able to give birth in the water because I would have been an, on an epidural. Um, because I, what they do with twin births is they actually, you can have, potentially have your first baby, um, delivered naturally. Um, but the second baby, they actually go inside your vagina and they pull the second baby out. That's if you're lucky. Um, a lot of the times they'll, you'll just have a straight up cesarean for either the whole birth for both babies or they'll do a cesarean for the second to get the second baby out. A lot of twin births are actually done just in, a, in an operating room, um, not even in a normal delivery room because so many, it's because there's such a high chance of there being a surgery with twin births. Those are very medicalized things that for sure would have happened to me if I was in the hospital. But the biggest things for me were um, that I, wouldn't be in the water. Um, my daughter would be much more traumatized if she was watching me give birth around um, being treated this way. I would walk away from another birth feeling unempowered about my body's ability to birth on its own. And I wasn't willing to take the risk of that happening to me again. Whew. Basically learned all of those things and um, I just knew that birth is designed to work. And you know, at the end of the day, if there is some sort of emergency, I would go to the hospital because, and I would be happy that the hospital was there because that's what hospitals are for. They're for emergencies. So yeah, that was the place that we got to. And I actually thought that I was gonna be able to stay with my OB till the very end. Um, and that I was just gonna by accidentally give birth at home. Um, but I couldn't handle the stress of even going in for my appointments to go to the obstetrician was so stressful for me. Um, it was giving me so much anxiety and I kept on thinking, this is really bad for me. This is this anxiety, this stress is really bad for me. It's really bad for my babies. This is the last thing that I should be um, experiencing. Reached a point where I was like, okay, um, I'll, I'll continue to go see her, but I need her, I need to go see her on my terms. It needs to be, um, I need to get things done that I feel are necessary to get done. And I had opted out for wanting to have any more ultrasounds because I was seriously concerned about EMF radiation and I had already had five ultrasounds because I was in this high risk category. I was catapulted into having like ultrasounds all the time. I reached a point where I was like, I don't want to have ultrasounds anymore. And my obstetrician, when I told my obstetrician that, she said that she didn't know how to treat me if I didn't have ultrasounds. So that to me was just a very strong message that she um, wasn't willing to offer the prenatal care that I wanted to receive. Um, so I basically um, chose to walk away from her at 33 weeks. Um, and it was the most freeing, incredible experience ever just to be like, okay, I just literally walked away from what wasn't working for me. I didn't want to be a victim to a system that I simply don't believe in. From there, we decided to hire a doula um, because, and this was a doula that supported free births. She'd actually had one herself. So I knew she was the right person to have um, in our corner and on our team. And I knew that from the moment I told her that I wanted to free birth, she believed in me. There was not even an ounce of doubt in her mind that I could do it. And that was exactly the kind of person that I needed, that we needed around um, um, in our corner and on our team. And I ultimately wanted to have an extra set of hands around just the house to help out because we were going to be having two babies, you know, uh, Safia was going to be there, Matisse. We, we wanted to have, um, help from someone that, um, that knew, um, that was supportive, um, and knew what, what my ultimate dream was. Yeah, so obviously by walking away from my obstetrician, I didn't do any of the standardized testing. I didn't do the gestational diabetes test. I didn't do the GBS test, the strep B test. 
Um, I opted out from doing ultrasounds at the end, although I did have five, like I said, which I think is more than enough. I didn't do any stress tests. I didn't do anything. My, my prenatal care was really tapping into my meditation and yoga practice, eating extremely, um, healthily. <laughs> I ate a plant-based diet for most of it. <laughs> But I was craving oysters, so I had some oyster, some raw oysters during my pregnancy. I just followed what my body's instincts and intuition told me to do. That was prenatal care. Prenatal care was connecting with my body and my what what messages my body was delivering to me and what I needed to hear, rather than what um, you know an ultrasound test would have told me or what um, an obstetrician would have told me. Um, I was my care provider because ultimately I am an expert over my own body. So that was, um, it felt freaking amazing. <laughs> my birthing time started at 39 weeks and 39 weeks and seven days. And I, um, I ha actually ended up having the babies on their quote unquote due date that we were so unattached from. Even when people would ask me, oh, when is your due date? I would say in the spring because we were so detached from the, the due date. It was the most incredibly freeing experience ever. I let the birth start spontaneously, which means I didn't do anything to, you know, get it started. I didn't try any like induction tips or anything. I just wanted it to start on its own. And, and also Sarah Buckley says that too. It's sort of like, there's not really um, something that that makes the, the labor begin. It's sort of like a key entering into a lock and just opening. And that's, you know, the, the hormones are all in order. Everything's in order. Everything's had to go. Baby's ready to go and the birth begins, you know? And that's exactly how it began spontaneously. I wanted my hormonal cascade to flow in, in a way in which it was meant to, um, which was undisturbed and untouched. And that's exactly what happened. I have now altered you know, my DNA forever. I've altered the baby's DNA and Safi's DNA forever to know that this is, this is how birth can happen. It can be um, completely natural and undisturbed and untouched and it doesn't have to be uh, medicalized. I couldn't I couldn't risk going to the hospital I was way more terrified of going to the hospital than of giving birth at home everyone's like wow you're so brave that you gave birth at home no I was way more scared to go into the hospital to be in a place where I would have no choice over what was happening to me and my body and I wanted to be the the most important thing for me was that I was in a space of where I could give birth in the water my daughter could be there and I was autonomous over my own body and my own choices that was it you know the babies were born one after the other and and after all this fear around oh you're gonna have to have the babies pulled out of you and the and and you're gonna have to have a c-section this this and that birthing the second baby was the easiest part of the entire birth it was so simple it just happened so naturally and so easily because i trusted in my body's ability to do so. We chose not to tell anyone that we were choosing deciding to free birth because I didn't want to deal with anyone else's fears. I just wanted to deal with my own fears and I knew that if I had been open about wanting to free birth that people would have tried to fear me and to fear me out of it. I would have been I'm sure getting phone calls left, right, and center um, about how it was a bad idea and and the last thing I needed was other people's fear to ruin my birth and I just wanted to deal with my own fears that came up. Um, and so yeah, we chose not to tell anyone and that was definitely the right choice for us um, to keep it to keep it a, a family private matter. I remember when the placenta, um, when after the, both the babies were born, um, and if you wanna watch my birth story, you can watch my birth story to hear all about, about how my birth went down. But there was one choice in particular that was when I was had birthed the, um, both babies and I got into my bed and the placenta was still, both placentas were still inside me and we had the umbilical cords hanging out. And at first I thought to myself, oh, well, maybe we'll just keep the, the, um, 
the cords attached to the placentas for as long as possible. Um, and that's sort of what I wanted at first. And then I was realizing with both babies, it was kind of hard to move around. It was sort of hard for me to get the placenta out. And with, from like, from me having that one thought, maybe like 10, 15 minutes later, I realized, you know what? I think I'd just like to cut the cords now. They were both white and all the blood had came, gone out of them. So I figured, you know what? Actually, you guys, I think I, think I wanna cut the cords now. Okay, just making that one simple choice around me, my body, and my birth, <sighs> I have goosebumps. Because that was an autonomous choice that I knew was right for us in that situation. And the birth was honestly epic. It changed my life. I feel like now, and the birth was hard. It was intense. It was raw. It was, it was, it was beautiful. And, and, and everything that I went through in that birth prepared me to be a strong twin mother that I am now, or else I don't think I would have been able to feel imp as empowered as I do now to be raising um, twins. I have raising three girls, you know, I feel very empowered to take on whatever comes my way. And I really feel like this experience prepared me to be able to do that. I think when we avoid the pain of birth, it comes up later on in different ways. It doesn't go away because I have lived with the pain and regret of not having a home birth with my first daughter every day since I've had her. Whereas if I had just gone through the pain for whatever that 24, 24 hours or 36 hours would have been of me being in pain during her birth, it would have been done and over with and I would be living with no regret. And now every day I have to live with this like regret about how I would have done things differently. So the pain doesn't go anywhere if you don't face it in the moment. It doesn't just disappear. There's no like bypass of like, oh, I'm just gonna get through this birth with no nothing. It comes up in different ways later on. I am just grateful ultimately that Safia was able to witness um, a natural physiological birth of her twin sisters. That's the most important thing to me. So it was an incredible gift um, to myself and my family and I am forever changed from it. And if you can take one thing away from this video, I would just say, just always know that you are the gatekeeper to your birth. You are a sovereign free being and you have freedom to choose your own autonomous choices free from what anybody else tells you. No one knows what's best for you except for you. So that's the most important thing for me and that's the message that I wanna spread about giving birth is that you do have choices. Whether you do wanna to choose to go in the hospital, choose to go in the hospital, but just make sure that you're making your own choices all along the way. That is my message. Please subscribe and like and share this video. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao for now.